thank you for being here. It's a great pleasure for us. And we would like to ask you some questions. Sure. So, um, I would like to know a little bit about your journey, like your personal journey. I've heard that you've worked for McDonald's and now you work for NASA. How did it happen? Yeah, well, I, I talk to the kids, I tell them how poorly I did in school. So since I did poorly in school, I couldn't get any kind of job, but I could get a job at McDonald's. Wow. And, and for me, it was a big thing because prior to working at McDonald's, I failed at everything I could do, except for sports. I was really good at sports, but anything else, failed everything in school. I, I didn't have any confidence that I could do anything. So just when I got to McDonald's, I was able to understand I could flip burgers, I could make fries, I could do milkshakes. I realized I could do things besides just sports. So it was a great stepping stone for me to build confidence. And then I tried many different jobs and I tried to stay away from university because I didn't like school. But after 12 years, I realized if I wanted to generate the income I needed to do my hobby, which is racing cars, I would have to get a better job. And the only way to do that was to go to university. So I went to eight years of night school. So I tell the kids, 20 years after I finish high school is the best thing I ever do. And I try to encourage them to do that because it gives you so many more opportunities. And, and I used to think you had to be so super smart to go to college. And when I got out of high school, I was working with people who'd been to college. And they would say, hey Gabe, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I was thinking, you're the one that went to college. Why are you asking me? So it's kind of strange in a way I realized by being around people who've been through college and university that you don't have to be so smart and if they could do it, so could I. And so it was a great way for me to start university and to finish it. So, and what do you recommend to our Brazilian science teachers? Uh, I think learning should be fun. I would encourage all teachers to make learning fun. The more fun you can have learning, the easier it will be and the longer you remember it. So I think that's the main thing to me. I, I always try to emphasize having fun with everything you can do in your life. And it's all mental. And, and the same with school. You can approach school as something negative or you can approach it as something positive. And if you can learn to approach it in a positive way, and if teachers help you have fun doing it, the learning will be easier and you remember it longer. What do you suggest to those who want to be a space engineer? Anybody who would like to be a space engineer or an astronaut, I encourage them to do that. I talked a little bit about dreams and goals with the kids, and I tell them, if you want to be an astronaut, write it down. This is my goal. I want to be an astronaut. Then ask yourself, what steps do I take to achieve that? And plan small steps. The smaller you go, the easier it is. The easier it is, the more confidence you have. The more confidence you have, the easier it becomes. And you build that slowly and slowly until one day you realize, I can do anything. But then you have no stress, you have no pressure, and you never work. Your life is fine. What message do you want to leave to all the Brazilian students and scientists? Yes, I have a message I always like to leave, okay? Three things. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. If you do your best, it builds confidence. If you enjoy what you do, you always have fun. And the more you believe in yourself, the easier your life will be. What are the next future challenges in the space research, What, in your opinion? I think the biggest challenge right now is to go faster. If we want to explore into the depths of the solar system, or even go beyond the solar system, there's got to be a way to go a thousand times faster than we go now. You know, we had a mission that went to Pluto. It took 10 years to go to Pluto. Mm -hmm. So you can't possibly think about putting somebody in a ship for 10 years and then getting there and exploring for a couple and coming back. They would never survive. Do you believe in life in another planet? Oh yes, there has to be. There, there's thousands of galaxies and thousands of thousands of planets. There has to be life somewhere. I personally don't think it's come and visited us on Earth. Maybe it has, I haven't really seen it. I know there's people say they've been taken up in a ship and explored and brought back down. And maybe they have, I don't dispute them, but uh, I, I personally don't think it's been here. I think we would know if it had been here. But for those that have that belief, that's their priority. Thank you very much once again. My pleasure.